playing CTF X. And uh, a lot of CTFs are too hard, and I would put this one in that category. Uh, we have zero point, so oh, now we have one point. They finally put up, they finally put up one easy problem, and somebody solved it last night. Yeah. Were you the one? <laughs> but somebody, somebody, they finally put up a one point problem. Oh, somebody solved this. Hey. Neat, we have 50 points. This happened since last night. That's good, because I couldn't figure this one out. Um, there's a zip file here, yeah. and it contains a RAM. Yeah, this, I might as well mention this one going by, and especially now it's solved. I went through and got partway through this. There's a zip file, and when you open up the zip file, it's got a memory image from um, VIM. VIM is a Linux text editor, and he, his machine crashed while VIM was running, and he got a RAM image. So you could get recover the text from it. I was able to do that, and um, I got this stuff in there. And it looked to me like this is ASCII art, if I could only figure out how to line it up. It will spell something out, but I couldn't figure out how to line it up. And I guess somebody else figured it out, because we got that one. It'd be interesting if they'll explain it, and this is the sort of thing you ought to explain how you did it. But anyway, when you're doing a CTF, by the way, I always do this, and I highly recommend it, you have to keep notes. You take a quick look at every problem, and then you keep some kind of notes of what you figured out. And it doesn't have to be terribly neat, but here I save links to important websites and things where I seem to be making some progress, and maybe I'll come back to it. Um, this one here, by the way, is pretty heavily um, focusing on programming. A lot of these, there's like a Python file. You download the Python file, and if you can only read this junk and understand it, you can figure out what's happening. Like this one here is, uses the Lambda Python function over and over and over again, and Lambda is a meta function. So if you understand it well, which I don't, maybe you can figure out what's going on. There's a bunch of these where it does some kind of goof, goofy encryption. Anyway. But the one, this is the one point one somebody solved. And the one I was interested in was, um, I think it was this one actually. Yeah, employees have to password protect their files. So you have a, a thing called files.zip. When you download it and unzip it, you will get two files and I've got them here. I always make a folder for CTF and I play with it here. So here's what happens when you unzip it. There are two files in there. EvelynDavis.zip and RyanKing.zip. When you open these, they require a password. So, no clue what to do, but password I just Googled, cracker. what's that? Password cracker. That's right, so I looked for a password cracker, and there is a password cracker in Kali Linux, which I found, um, and used that, and I got that, yeah, fcrackzip is the password cracker, and I just went online and found like a tutorial or a video or something, and just showed, use this. This will try all six letter passwords. And so I did it, and there's two things I learned right away. The first thing, which is awesome, is even if it doesn't crack it, it shows you what's inside there, which is handy. I didn't know this, and this I think is a, a weakness also of Microsoft Windows, zip password encryption. Even if you password protect a zip folder, the file names are still visible in plain text. And so I was able to see the files and the size, compressed and uncompressed, of the files. Yeah? That's, an outlook, that's like a signature file. Yes. It's from outlook, it is. Yes. And so this is real important because I, was, I remembered vaguely that there was a particular weakness with, pass, with WinZip encryption. Um, and that's what we're going to explain here. So this one here, there are two files in here. There's a signature.ping, which is an image. And then there's a VCS, which is like a virtual business card. It just has your name and address in it. And um, anyway, so you can see what's in there. And I ran this thing with just the default cracker, which tries six-letter passwords, and I was able to open one of them. This one was found. Evelyn has the password of Basher. And it just tries all six-letter passwords, and in like a few minutes, it finds it. So you can open Evelyn after that. So let's do that. When you open Evelyn. But why didn't the system shut you off after five tries? Uh, where? Well, because usually when, you have a, when you're trying to do something, the after you have five tries? Yeah, this is a oh. password oh. after 10 tries. Oh, um, right, but this isn't the access This is not this using that. Yeah, that's right. I see what you mean. That would help. But this is a crack it in some other way. Right. I think it's just doing math on it. Right. That's right. Good. Good point. Anyway, so um, so you can open Evelyn Davis. And I'm just going to copy it to another, make another folder so I don't tread so much on my other junk here. All right. So here's Evelyn Davis. So now I know her name is Basher. Her password is Basher. So I can get in her files. Now when I see her files, there are two files here. This VCF file is just a plain text file. And let me make it, um, open it with a text editor. Here's the one I like. All right, so that is what that thing looks like. 
This is going to be super important. It's a simple plain text file and it's got her email address and her name and a full name in a sort of this simple looking format. Now, the other file in here is a signature and if you open it up, it's just her signature, an image of her signature. So I said, okay, fine. Now, the other file where I couldn't get the password, I could at least see inside it enough to see what was there. The Ryan King file has the same thing. It has a virtual card file and a signature.ping, but this signature is much bigger. So I'm guessing this is probably the flag written out. But I can't open it because I don't know the password, and if I let that program run for a while, it's not finding it, and I'm just thinking how I would make this if I was making it. There's a reason you do it this way, because I googled weaknesses in, in PKZIP encryption, and the famous weakness is a known plain text attack. If you have an archive that has multiple files, and you know what's in one of the files, you can crack the password, which I suspect probably comes from failure to use a nonce. The similar problem with Microsoft Word encryption before Office 2008. Um, so that, anyway, you, so you have to know some plain text, and that's when I looked, I realized I can totally reconstruct Ryan King's PKF. All I have to do is put in Ryan King every place I have Evan Davis. I can guess what his file looks like. And then I knew I was right, because when I did that, I made Ryan King file, which is um, up. That's not what I want. Stop. Okay. I want to go up to here. I made the Ryan King file. Let's see if I can get something to work here. Okay, keep going up until I get something that makes sense. There we are. I made the Ryan King VCF file. I just guessed. But it, I, I felt pretty confident that I was doing it right. So I just made Ryan King look like Evelyn with just a name. And then I looked at the number of bytes and it exactly matches what I found out before. It told you how big the file was. So I'm pretty sure I have knowledge of this plain text file. And therefore, there are various tools to use. What I found was there's a tool called F crack, um, let me find it. Well, it's the one I've got running here. Let's go to my Linux machine now, um, which is here. All right, um, what, you, what you have to do is to make this thing, use this program called PK crack. Now this, this, see, this in the 90s, people found this weakness in the encryption, where if you know some of the plain text, you can lower the number of keys to guess. Down. And it turns out, from looking at this, it takes your password and somehow converts it into three keys that aren't too long. And it can, this game can reduce the keys. What's kind of funny about this thing is it can decrypt the file without finding the password. It finds the keys, and it's another whole long process to find the password, but you don't really need the password. All you really need is the keys to decrypt the files. So, but the problem with this thing is I could not make it work. I found like four online tutorials they were mostly sort of poorly phrased. The only one that was really accurate was gone from the web, and the only thing I could see was the Google cache, and the Google cache had it with little blurry images you can't see, and the full-size images were gone. So this guy was telling you how to do it, and I struggled for hours trying to run this thing, and I couldn't get anywhere, and I finally found out that to use it properly, um, there are two modes, and finally, I woke up in the morning, after I went to sleep, I was oh, 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 late last night struggling with this damn thing, it was really frustrating me. And then I said, so I, one thing I tried last night is I Googled for another tool and I found a Windows tool, a password cracker, like a demo version from Elcomsoft. And Elcomsoft is the king of this stuff. Yeah. The Russian company, they can hack at everything, BitLocker and everything, they'll, they'll hack at anything. So this was a really old version of something and I ran it and it cracked it. But it's the demo version, so all it would do was find that Ryan King file, not the piece, not the other file. But that proved that I'm on the right track. You do need known plain text. I just need a tool I can figure out how to use. So I woke up this morning. I said, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a case myself. This is what I should have done last night. I was trying to rush to the answer and not taking enough time to do it carefully. What I did was I made a test case. Um, and I've got it on my desktop here. Because I, I, a lot of things were worrying me, like the format. So I just went here. I just installed an old version of WinZip on Windows 10. It ran. I went to old versions and got like WinZip 10 from 10 years ago. And it runs on Windows 10, which surprised me. And so then I just made a series of files. A known text file, one, an unknown one. I made a password protected zip archive and an unpassword protected zip archive. And I said, there, now I know everything. I know the password. I'm going to crack into this thing. And I, what I did was read the man page for the stinking product, which is very confusing. But I finally got it right just before class. And um, the command line that you have to use is just frustratingly confusing. This is, what you, this is what I finally have to use. 
I, this minus A is what cost me about eight hours. I didn't see this minus A. And if you don't, and he never explains it, but if you don't put in the minus A, it doesn't work, and it doesn't just crash, it struggles, and it tells you, you must have zipped with the wrong version of, of zip, which is not true. And I spent a long time reading the file header in binary and checking to see what version of encryption was using and saying, no, that's the right encryption, downloading other things and zipping it. And I said, man, but you have to have the minus A. I don't know what it stands for. But anyway, um, so this is the way to do it. You have a encrypted archive, which includes two files. Then you have the name of the file that you know that's in there. Then you have another archive that you made that has and the name of the file in there that matches it. These are the four parameters you need. And then you tell it where to put, see if you don't put in minus D, it will try to find the password. So first it'll find the keys, then it'll start searching for the password, and this will take forever. They warn you, it will take forever. It's like doing a brute source, paste through all the, yeah. It's a password for what, to unzip it? Or? Yes. But so if, does that mean that it's encrypted by? It is encrypted, but see, what it does is it takes the password and it somehow boils it down to like three numbers from the password, probably by hashing it. And that's what it really encrypts with. So if it finds the numbers, it can decrypt, but it doesn't know the password that you type in. And so if you want to find the password, that's really a second step and an unnecessary one, and it takes forever. So you have to put in this minus D saying, what I want you to do when you find the keys is decrypt it and put it in here. And then, no, I don't care about the stinking password. I just want the contents of that file decrypted. <laughs> and that takes about half an hour. And see, the other, and it, I also had, anyway, the, the step that I couldn't see because the image was too small and the only form that explained it is the way to test your file I didn't know, you did. along with this product comes an extract thing up here. You'll see it, yeah, in green, extract there. That extract thing, I don't know how this works, that extract thing will take a file out of the encrypted archive and put it in a separate file. So you get one of the files, it's still encrypted, but you can get it out of there. I think it's just picking it out by the headers. I think each encrypted file is stored separately and there is a start and stop it. And if you do that, you can see if it's gonna work because one of the tests they tell you to make sure you're on the right track is this, um, ls minus l r star. This is an important test. When you get it right, the, you zip it yourself and extract it, and then you extract it from the archive and you will have a 12 byte difference. An encrypted zip file is 12 bytes bigger than a plain text zip file. So this is a test to make sure you're doing things right, that 12 bytes. All right, and if I run just these two extracted files in and crack them with that product, it will work, but it'll then search for the, um, the password and not find it. And this is what I ran right before class. So I finally had the right version of this after many tries, and here's what it does. It started at 1117, and it succeeded at 1141, and it found, it was able to decrypt these two files, including signature.ping. So it was able to decrypt them both, and it created the file I told it to create, which was um, key out, I think. Yeah, key out. So I took key out here, added a zip to it, and now you can open it. And when you open it, it has a signature, and when you open the signature, it's got something readable. And I haven't put it in, but I'm gonna put it in there now. This, this is called the plain text zip attack, so that's the joy of this. So let me just put it in, and that's what I wanted to show you. Um, this one's actually in the recommended format. This is one thing about CTFs, if you haven't done Merriam, they always have some goofy format for the flag, and they often forget to tell the people to write the puzzles, so about half the puzzles aren't in the right format, and that can frustrate you when you win. So um, this is CTF P1, all right. This is where I, I'm really happy with Zoom. What exactly, I guess that's lead speak. P1, four, I, N, T, E, X, T, zip, Four T T four C K. Okay, that I think is the right flag. Let's put that in and see what happens. Um, that is this one. Okay, now I I assume I fouled it up somehow. Um, no, they they said it has to have the CTF parentheses. Let's get the image again. This is this is one of the irritating things. <laughs> let's, let's, and that's what I think, all right, so let's see if we, somebody can spot, what have I done wrong here? Oh, I thought he's maybe an L, is that a one? Is that an L? It might be an L. Yeah. I think it might be an L, all right, that would do it. All right, let's see if that works. Yes. 
Aha, hey! really? Okay, good, okay. So that's the joy. So now we actually should be doing pretty well. So these guys have 951, but we're not at the bottom anymore, I think. Now we're at 151. So somebody got a 50 by reading some of And so it's not hopeless, but this is one that's not much fun. This is where you struggle and struggle and you might not even get any. The, the high school oriented ones are nicer where you'll find two or three you can solve and you feel less stupid. But anyway. Um, is this a high school one? If it is, it's really too hard. <laughs> I thought it was, and when I started doing it, I said, man, this can't be a high school one. Is this really a high school rated one? I don't know. You said you said this one? No, I think it is, actually. Huh. This is a high school one? Well, I think... Where is this high school one? I know. I mean, I want to go to this high school and take their classes. Anyway, um, but I think... Anyway, it's pretty hard, but at least we got some of them. All right, so I'm going to stop the recording of this, and then I just want to talk about some administrative stuff here. Um, let me quit this and save this as CTFX.move. All right.